the Comedy Historian Podcast with Robert and Gemma Ross. Hello chums, Robert Ross here and welcome to a brand new podcast. Uh, we've been a bit remiss in these, haven't we Gemma yeah, recently? We have, we uh, have. We've been too busy. <laughs> <laughs> we've been wonderfully busy, so thank you for everybody that's come to support the shows and who uh, have bought copies of the Carry On Girls, which is doing wonderfully well. Um, but what we're going to do, hopefully, if we've got time, and um, forgive us if we don't keep to this strictly, religiously, but um, we're going to try and do at least one podcast every two weeks. Yeah. One sort of roundup of what, we, what we've just done and what we're about to do in the worlds of comedy and laughter. And the next one would be like a celebration of a comedian or comedy actor or comedy series. So send us suggestions for people that you want myself and Gemma to talk about. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there, really. So, Robert, what have we been up to? It's, it's been a busy start to 2024. Yeah, you promised me um, around Christmas time that we were going to have a quiet 2024 because I had books to write. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the midst of two books at the moment, um, more of which later, I'm sure. But, so uh, yeah, we've had a brilliant um, burst of shows this this year so far. Um, we were back at the Discover Bucks Museum, um, uh, uh, complimenting their um, 1980s exhibition, I Grew Up 80s. What did we show? We, we had a, a real, we looked at 80s <coughs> TV <coughs> classics. Yes, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat there, and it's not Kermit. Um, no, so we had um, all the goodies, and we had a bit of The Young Ones and uh, Doctor Who we talked about, 80s Doctor Who, obviously, because I uh, wrote three um, audio adventures for Colin Baker, Doctor Number 6, as was. He's now Doctor 406, I think, after all the, the reshuffles and rewrites on uh, on new Doctor Who, but that was for Big Finish, uh, so that, that, was, that was fun. Um, yes, yeah, so we did all sorts of things, really, a, a whole sort of galaxy of... Uh, cult uh, TV, be it comedy, be it children's TV, be it sci-fi, whatever. Do you think there's going to be plans to do another one? What, another 80s? Yeah. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, that was fun. That's, that's, this is my, my generation uh, <laughs> of comedy, really. So that was, that was a hoot, yeah. And we're back at the Discover Bucks Museum um, looking at the, uh, the wild and wonderful and varied career of Sidney James, which is April the 20th. I think I'm right in saying that, Gemma. I'm looking at Gemma, I'm looking at Gemma because Gemma is my walking, talking diary. I folks. can't remember, but if you visit our website www.robertross.co.uk, and if you click on the shows tabs or performance tabs, I forget which one it is. It's yeah. one of those. You'll see where we're coming up. Yeah. But also, sign up to the or not sign up, but just join the, uh, the the Facebook Comedy Historian. If you hashtag Comedy Historian, you'll find the Robert Ross. Uh, comedy page, which is myself and Gemma run that, mostly Gemma to be fair, but um, but that also keeps you uh, in the loop about what's coming up and you can sign up via the website to the monthly free newsletter, which gives you no excuse to miss anything we're doing. So there you go. And we also had, so on uh, Friday just gone, so it's actually Sunday today, it's the 18th of February we're recording this. Uh, so on the Friday we were at the Wanstead Tap. Oh, that was great. A really gorgeous venue. I must just say, if you're ever in the area or if you're local, absolutely go and visit it. It's a gorgeous beers on tap. Yes. And they have some fantastic events. But uh, we were there and we were talking all things the Carry On Girls. So that will be dropping soon and we will share it. Yeah. Uh, Dan, Dan Clapton, who, who runs it, uh, is brilliant, a brilliant raconteur and host of the Wanstead uh, podcast, which we did. Uh, so I think it's only the second or third one they've done. Um, but we've got the record so far for the longest ever <laughs> podcast. Um, and we're determined that we're going to be the Ken Dodd of podcasts. We're going to be the longest runner. Um, and we're very happy, uh, hopefully, to go back uh, to the Wanstead Tap. It's great. Uh, so, yeah, recommended. Um, and it's a nice little precursor to our... First, we've done quite a few Right On Comedy events. Uh, right On Comedy, W-R-I-T-E. If you don't know, it's our company that we celebrate and champion um, writers about comedy or comedy people who write, regardless of, of whether they write crime fiction or poetry or comic strips, whatever. Uh, we celebrate people we really love and admire. And um, we've done a few sort of events in the past, book festivals and the like. 
but we're doing our first right on comedy club meeting, aren't we? We are. So tell the tell the ladies and gents about that, Jim. Well, that's happening on Friday, the twenty third of February. It's um, at a it's a church hall actually, so it's St Aloysius Church, which is in Summers Town. It's literally round the corner from Euston Station, so lots of lovely connections for you to get there. And we are going to be talking to some Carry On girls and some people that were in the films. We've also got tributes from Steve Nallen, who's going to be talking all about Beryl Reed and Dora Bryan. And we also have Andy Merriman, who you probably know really well as Hattie Jakes' biographer. If you don't know Andy's work, he will be signing some book, books and selling some books on the evening. Absolutely. So that's from um, Doors Open at 7 o'clock. Um, and it should be a really nice evening. It's going to be great. And we, uh, the, so far, um, uh, committed to, to be there, the cat from the Carry On Girls, um, sort of uh, a glorious gaggle of, of, of actresses that, that appeared in the Carry Ons. We've got Dear Pals, Louise Burton, who was in Carry On England, and Carry On Emmanuel. We have Pauline Piert, who was in Carry On Girls itself. Brilliant Pauline Piert. Um, and we have Alexandra Dane, they call me Busty, in Carry On Up the Kyber and many more. She pops up and almost pops out in Carry On Doctor and Carry On Again Doctor and Carry On Loving. And uh, she was uh, in the uh, original production of Carry On London, the stage show. Uh, so she's got some amazing tales. So that's going to be great fun. And we've also got David McGillary coming as well, the trufo of smut. Uh, and and we've also got Larry Dan coming with have. his book as yes, well. Yes, Larry Dan's um, uh, Oh, What a Lovely Memoir, which uh, we launched last year at the um, uh, Cinema Museum Carry On Day. Uh, Larry is back to sign books. So if you've not got your copy yet, please pop along and, and get that. It's it's a brilliant read. I mean, his career, not just the four Carry Ons and on television in The Bill, but his stage career and film career goes way, way back to when he was a, a wee tot as a small boy working with people like Stuart Granger. So it's an amazing read. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a lineup. So I'm excited about that. And also, we should talk about books, 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 because Robert is hard at work. And I, I think it's, a, it's an anniversary today, isn't it? It is. Well, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a secret now that I'm working on this book for Great Northern Books, brilliant publishing house um, based in Manchester. They've done uh, amazing books on uh, uh, Ken Dodd and Larry Grayson. Um, and I'm doing a biography about Peter Sellers. Um, and today... February the 18th, if not only my sister's birthday, happy birthday, Fiona, uh, but also Goody Graham Garden's birthday, but it was an anniversary for one of Peter Sellers' weddings. <laughs> and there, there were quite a few. There were four. Um, so it's the so last you one. you can go online, <laughs> Google that, and find out well, who I, it I'm, was. I might put something up later on the, on the Comedy Historian Facebook page, uh, so you can check out that and, uh, and find out which wife it was. Um, I'll give you a clue. Spike Milligan said... It's the latest one, but it was the last. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got that. And you're also working with Geoffrey Holland, aren't you? Heidi Hyde. Heidi Hyde. Thank you. Oh, that's a treat. Geoffrey Holland. Uh, I'm sure, again, if you've supported our shows that uh, we've, we've toured around a few um, times now, uh, Comedy Friends and Comedy Heroes, uh, where I'm in conversation with Jeff, we we played the uh, the Dad's Army Appreciation Society weekend uh, last May in Thetford in, New in Norfolk, which was a a joy uh we've played Watford we've played all over the place um and we celebrate Jeff's long career and also his passions including Peter Sellers and the goons uh who he recreated for Dirt Mag's uh, uh resurrection of the goon shows a few years ago uh and his solo show Stan Laurel um so yeah we're doing that again aren't we as well that's in uh Hastings April, April in, in Hastings yes um, so uh, April is always a good time for comedy. We did the Watford Falls exhibition last April, um, so it's uh, it's always it's always a busy time for us, which I'm glad to say. So, how are you finding? Um, what's your sort of process at the moment with finishing up your book? Where are you at with and, Jeff? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's it's, it, <clears throat> it's getting there. Um, our deadline is April the April the first, April Fool's Day. So uh, we're we're going to hit that, I think. I'm not like Douglas Adams. I don't like uh, the sound of um, deadlines whooshing over my head. Um, I like to get books in under the wire. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. And it's a case of just phone calls and, and 
you and I are, are emailing Jeff and he's jotting down thoughts and we're Zooming and recording those and putting this whole wonderful life story together. It's 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 funny and poignant and full of name drops and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great book. Uh, and it's called, of course... The First <laughs> Rule of Comedy. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> what else could it be? But, no, it's, it's going to be fun. So that, in all being well, that should be out for Christmas... Uh, this year, 2024, along with the Peter Sellers, best sellers. So I've got a couple coming out this year. And who knows, maybe a third. Oh, well, God. If I, as if I'm not working hard enough already, uh, but yes, we'll see, we'll see. <coughs> um, so uh, just talking about actually right on comedy. So we do have an association membership, which um, we're hopefully going to be building this audience now in Euston. So um, do come along. If you join the membership, then you will get 50% off your tickets. Um, and it's it's going to be really great. But the other thing we're starting to do is actually in about two, three weeks' time, we're off to launch our Write on Comedy workshops, which are at the Aylesbury Waterside Theatre. They're over three uh, consecutive Wednesdays in the evening. And basically, if you have uh, a passion or an interest for comedy writing, um, be it you're looking at writing sketches or you're looking at writing a script or you're kind of more interested in the, the historical approach, which Robert and I have taken, um, then, you know, come along. Um, tickets are on sale. There's, there's only, um, I think we're about 50% full, so there's still a few more left. Limited space. I've got the dates now, Gemma, because I've got my diary here, my, my 500-year-old diary, proper Doctor Who. No, it's not. It's actually two years, but it looks like a, a TARDIS, so it's, uh, it's full of dates, uh, obviously, as a diary should be. Um, and the first one is uh, Wednesday the 13th of March. That's right, isn't it? 7 yeah. o'clock till 9 p.m., um, as you say, Gemma, at the Waterside um, Theatre in Aylesbury. And that's uh, the next Wednesday and the Wednesday after that. So sign up and uh, and we'll see you then. It's going to be a hoot. I can't wait to do that. Because obviously Gemma is the teacher of the group here. I'm more the sort of, I don't know, comedy historian <laughs> advisor or something. And I'll be quoting some, some of my favourite scripts and, and how they came about. And how I wrote as well. And I, I've written um, Doctor Who, as I mentioned, for Big Finish. And just sort of like... Um, writing sketches and writing um, situation comedy, and it's all different um, sort of disciplines, really. So uh, we're going to share our sort of um, experiences and our, our knowledge of the craft with, uh, with you, with, be, be you budding beginners or, 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 you know, established people that want a sort of refreshing, fresher course or just want to hang out with like-minded comedy fans and comedy writers to have a good laugh and... Uh, and and each of us sort of learn our our skills a bit better, really. I suppose it's all about sharing and, and caring, isn't it? Those and sort of collaborating. Things. Collaborating. Oh, we love collaborating. Yes. Um, actually, I was going to ask you, Robert. So, <clears throat> if you're looking to become a writer, what would you say if you've got a script written or a book written? What would you say is the biggest bit of advice? Oh gosh, just you would lis give someone? listen to people and uh, share it with with people that you, you respect and trust and and, and like. Um, and be prepared. I certainly have had to have this. You've got to be quite thick skinned in this game. Be prepared to have a bit of constructive criticism. I think that's important, mm. isn't it? I mean, I certainly listen to, to you, Gemma, uh, when you read what I've written and, and, and we share uh, and look at other people's uh, work that comes in. And, um, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm aware you really have a... Um, a core of an idea, a, a be it a book, be it a script, be it a poem, whatever, um, that you want to retain. But but it's always it's always improved with an with an extra rewrite and an extra rethink. And I know you can think, oh, I don't want to read this again. But it, every time you do it, every time you go back to it and and revisit it, it improves in my experience. Mm. Uh, so just do that, persevere, never give up, because it took me. Many, many years to get my first book commissioned or, or accepted by a publisher, The Carry On Companion. Um, I always say in the, in the shows that we do about my, my life in comedy, you know, I could wallpaper my house with rejection letters, but you just perseverance, never give up, because um, it really is the greatest feeling in the world when you get your book accepted. And I think what's interesting is we both have a very different approach to writing a mm, book do, yeah. um what would you say your approach is 
Um, I, I sort of like the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. I like the research of it. I like going into archives or libraries or just sort of re-watching stuff or listening to interviews or, or interviewing people that work with the person I'm writing with, uh, writing about, rather. Um, and then that's the sort of the, the bare bones of an idea. And then I keep on going back and adding flesh to the bones, as it were. How, how do you start when you've got that blank page in front of you? <laughs> and how you're do sweating you blood. Because um, it is a very scary thing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's sort of scary. Daunting, I suppose, is the word. I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, and looking back at something like The Forgotten Heroes of Comedy, which is just the, the, mat, the, the biggest tome I've ever done, you know, getting on for whatever it is, 800 pages or something. Um, I look at that sometimes for research for other things I'm doing, which is quite nice to go back and reference yourself. Um, but it's it, it seems impossible that I did that job really now. Or the Monty Python Encyclopedia, which just gets smaller and smaller print as you go on. It just seems to me just an, a ridiculous thing to have done. Um, but you do, you start with a blank page and you just start making lists of things you need to cover. Um, in, so you in do lists. Yeah, I do lists. Because I'm, I'm quite different to you. Yeah. My approach is um, I need my structure first. I have to have like um, I, I I feel like for me it's like building a house. So I need to have my foundations laid first. So what is the outline of the structure, and then then I'd say is my research. And then from the research, when I get into interviews, I, I, I kind of want to I go with an idea of what I want. So I have to map that out. Would, would you do the same for that? Well, for interviews? Uh, yeah, I, I certainly go with a, with a list of questions in my head or on a piece of paper, depending if I know the person. <laughs> it's quite worrying. I remember interviewing Warren Mitchell um, for the book I wrote on Marty Feldman. Um, and I'd never met him before. I literally just had exchanged emails with him, or and he said, you know, basically come around to my house. Uh, and I was I was quite nervous, thinking he might be a bit like Alf Garnett, you know, stupidly because I've been in this game a long time. But of course, Warren Mitchell's an actor that plays Alf Garnett, and he was the sweetest person and very welcoming and lovely. And 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 my list of questions just almost fell to the floor because it was a conversation that just flowed and that way I think you get better stuff if you relax mm. with someone but it's just whatever works really but um, this is all part of the course we're giving away stuff here <laughs> but, it's good um, though it's, it's good, good stuff <laughs> so it's going to be more of the same of this but no it's, it's and I mean, thankfully we're, we work really well together on the Carry On Girls mm. um, because I don't think anybody's come back to us and said I know which of you wrote which bit have they they might do now they we've mentioned do now. it <laughs> yeah, yeah. But can you tell can you tell who wrote which bits of the carry on girls I'll be intrigued to find out <laughs> yeah yes page 120 was written there, there by were, there were bits there were bits that I I remember I was writing I I, I was I was writing and it and it sounded like so that Gemma had written in in the nicest possible way. I'm thinking I'm writing. I'm not going to say the style and stuff, but I thought this is slightly out of what I would usually do. But I was writing more because I was so impressed with what you'd done on another bit that I wanted to sort of almost emulate that and 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 merge the two bits together. It was um, it was very strange when we set out to write that book because I don't think we had a clear path of where we wanted to go or who was going to write what. I think you thought I was going to write all of it. <laughs> well, well I did at one point. Um, <laughs> but I enjoyed it, though, no, yeah. I d- I'd but... love to do another one together, actually, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm not sure what we can do, but I'm sure there'll be... Any ideas you want us to write about? I'd love to collaborate with Gemma again. And I said at the book launch, if you were there, um, after all these years, what is it now, 20 odd years of writing books, I've never had so much press... And so many good reviews so quickly. Uh, she really should write more books with my, with my wife, I said. So <laughs> let's do that. Yeah, I don't know what we could write. That's uh, I haven't actually thought, like, will will we collaborate again? I'll have a think in the bath this afternoon. I'll have a, I'll have a eureka moment. Um, but, yeah. I'll oh, God, to... we've got enough to do. We've got enough I to know. do. I know. What else is coming up, then? So we've got... Um, um, what else is coming up? It's the got... Brighton Walk. We've got Brighton Walk yes. in July, which I know tickets, again, nearly at 50% sold. I mean, that's amazing. So um, it's going to be a just... slightly different route. If you came last time, <laughs> we're going to do a slightly different route. So I'm checking the diary. It's 20th of July, which is a Saturday... 
Um, and we usually kick off about midday, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So, so hopefully we will have that good weather that oh we had last gosh, year. Oh my gosh, that was Gerald Thomas, David Croft weather, wasn't it? It was beautiful. <laughs> if you don't know that, it was Gerald Thomas, the Carry On director, and David Croft, the director of Dad's Army. Never had bad weather. They just when they were on location, it was always beautiful sunshine for both of them. So we had we had the Thomas Croft blessing, which was lovely. But no, I loved that. We would covered Max Miller, of course, the pure gold of music hall, born and bred in Brighton and loved Brighton. Uh, we did the Carry Ons and Genevieve and uh, Douglas Bing, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful gay comedian Douglas Bing, um, who lived down in Brighton. And uh, yeah, so that was that was a hoot. I enjoyed that so much. Um, so yeah, I, and in fact, it's lovely that I know some of the wonderful people that came last summer have already booked for this one, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Which I think great. they're the ones that are already taking oh, the it? spaces. So <laughs> oh, okay. If you haven't been, hurry up. Well, that's reassuring. If you like it and come back, that means we're doing a good job, right? So that's that makes me really happy. So we've got well, we've got quite a lot coming up. Um, I just want to ask you one thing. So in the news at the moment, you're not expecting me to ask you this. Mm. You see, you can't see us now. You can't see our reactions <laughs> like the Facebook um, lives. I'm, I'm um, just a, this is a nervous laughter. What are you going to ask me, Jim? But before we round off, could you tell me what your opinion is on the recent news this week of Eric Idle and John Cleese? Oh, gosh, that. OK, Python's infighting. Yes. Um. Have you seen this? I'm sure you have seen this. It's in the news now, isn't it? Cause, yeah. Because Eric Idle has um, been tweeting, or Xing, whatever you call it now, uh, and John Cleese has answered. Um, well, I mean, to be honest with you, um, it's so it's so uh, typical of the Monty Python team. They've always been beautifully sort of um, self-aware and sending themselves up, be it in terms of doing stuff purely for the money, the, the final rip-off compilation lp and all that and 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 just doing stuff to cash in on the on their legacy um with in the greatest possible you know way um so part of me was a little bit suspicious because eric idol bless him is touring america at the moment because your cousin mm-hmm. saw him over there he's, he's in doing, san francisco he's doing, eric idol sings python songs or one of his one one man show things yeah. Isn't he? yeah which is always brilliant i love eric idol and when i was a kid he was my favorite python uh, i just thought he was so funny you know the Tora Molinos and all that business and the, and the nudge nudge wink wink with Terry Jones and all that but I loved I love him I love him dearly John Cleese of course has just about to launch the West End production of Faulty Towers um which I don't think I presume Connie Booth's getting some money on it I think it's, it's just billed as John Cleese's Faulty Towers though so they've both got stuff to sell <laughs> so the cynic in me or the or the marketing person in me thinks are they just having a public uh, row to 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 get some press behind it having said that um Eric Idle has sort of bad mouthed Holly Gilliam Terry Gilliam's daughter who sort of runs or or helps to run the the Python um, concerns or the Python sort of um, franchise, as it were. So it's getting a little bit nasty now. It's mm. getting a bit beyond a joke. Um, but I hope they get on because their legacy of laughter is so brilliant um, that I just, you know, I wouldn't want them to, to end end their days um, fighting over over sort of little bits of money and stuff and little bits of sort of um, public um, 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 sort of awareness of what they've done. But um, you know, I was I think I was beaten by Eddie Izzard um, when they did the O2 reunion shows, um, which was billed as one down, five to go. Of course, because Dr. Graham Chapman had died in 1989, and since then, of course, we've lost Terry Jones, and uh, Terry was very much uh, um, um, the the beating heart of Python, really, as is Michael Palin. Um, so um, they never seem to fall out with anybody. Mike, Mike, Mike and Terry, <laughs> they were always sort of so lovely to everybody. And uh, so um, anyway, I don't know who knows, but um, just just uh, I noticed. I think BritBox have cashed in on it. There's an awful lot of Monty Python on BritBox. That was just before. That <laughs> oh, was, was it just, just before. before. Oh, okay. So they, they've done all right. They, but they were very clever. A bit, bit of serendipity there. But so if you want to go back and watch some glorious Python, it's all on uh, all on BritBox. And to end on a really positive note, I know we mentioned this uh, in one of the newsletters um, last year, maybe the start of this year, the end of last year. Um, ITV in their glorious sort of um, 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 forgetfulness, uh, talking about Michael Palin and Terry Jones just immediately before Monty Python's Flying Circus began in 1969. Their last collaboration before going into Python was a thing called The Complete and Utter History of Britain, which was basically just a 
a, a wonderful Python-esque or pre-Python-esque sort of uh, sketch show all about history, which um, Terry and Mike love, of course. Um, and um, traditionally, for years and years and years and years, 50 years, all that was left of that was a handful of sketches, one or two episodes, and Mike and Terry had gone into the studio for Network DVD, the late lamented Network DVD, to record some missing, um, some links rather, to, to link the missing bits and pieces and, and do a sort of best of what's left of this show. Anyway, last year, ITV stumbled across these misfiled cans of film and they had the complete lot <laughs> in the archives already. So that's on BritBox as well. And um, somebody said to me the other day, oh, wasn't it a shame they wasted all that time doing those new links? I think it's great. I think it's great that now with Terry gone, bless him, we've got, we've got him and Mike in one of their last collaborations doing these great uh, links for their missing sketch show. And now we've got the sketch show in, uh, completely there as well. So we've got the best of both worlds. So, uh, so s search out the network DVD on eBay and then you can watch the whole thing on BritBox. There you go. <laughs> right. Well, before we wrap up, um, two last things. So possibly our next talk, we're going to have a bit more of a focus. We're going to try and alternate these so that one is a bit more focused and one will be just on what like we're this, up just to. Just rambling on about, <laughs> about what we're doing. I love these. Though. <laughs> and, and comedy news that's yes, coming exactly, up. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think our next one, we're going to celebrate someone who would have been 100 this year. Mr. Benny Hill. Ah, yes, fantastic. Alfred Hawthorne Hill, to give him his proper full name, January 1924. So let's do Benny Hill, that'd be great. Yes, good. Looking forward to that. And we will also, in two weeks, we, um, we have the privilege of being able to go to the Comic Relief at the London Palladium. So catch us after that, hopefully in about, what's it, two or three weeks' time. Yeah. We will do another podcast and we'll tell you all about oh, that yes. evening. Oh, yes, Lenny Henry's Last Stand. I'm looking forward to seeing that. That's a, a, an amazing bill of stand-up comedy uh, for the, the best of comedy causes, comic relief. So, yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah. What a year already. I know. It's almost hardly <laughs> started and I'm exhausted already, but great, fantastic. Well, I enjoyed that. Jim, how long was that? Look, if we wrap it on, 25 minutes. There we go. Lovely. All right, then. All right. So take care, everybody, and we'll see you again soon. Love and laughter. See you next time. <laughs>